Okay, so just um, just sent out a um, a message saying that we're going to be streaming here shortly, or yep, we're streaming now. All right, we are live. Come and. All right, you guys. Um, this is founder Leroon. Um, I want to thank you for joining me for part three of three for the stream for uh, the Dungeon Master series. This will be the final part of a three-leg journey. Um, what we had is uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that along the way. But uh, for the most part in the first series, in the first part of it, I should say, in the first episode, we went over the um, anatomy of a module and how that's put together. And that module was provided to us by Rob2E to use as a teaching tool for people who are interested in Fantasy Grounds. And today I also have my assistant and also a teacher at FGC is uh, Fat Ninja. Can you say hi to everybody? Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Fat Ninja. DM chilling like a fat super villain with my boy Lee Run. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. So today we're going to do a little bit of recap, and we're also going to get into some of the customization options of Fantasy Grounds. Now, the first thing I taught you guys in the uh, uh, episode one was how a module was laid out, what makes up a module. I showed you a few things in there like, you know, like the uh, feats and classes and items and parcels and all those good things. But uh, in this one, I'm going to be showing you guys some customized things that you may or may not want to use. It depends on what you're up to and what you're trying to get into. So this will be more or less uh, creating custom content. And there's a couple tools I want to tell you guys about. There's also some uh, different things that would go into making a module. And so I just wanted to recap a little and have all of you follow along with uh, Fantasy Grounds for a little bit. And then I'm actually going to drop out of Fantasy Grounds and start showing you guys some of the tools that could be used to help you either import or uh, change things or do some sort of uh, um, edits. Depends on what you're trying to achieve. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out the actual um, tool list that I use. And this is something that I have in my tool bag and not all of you are gonna have this. So first of all, um, I want to also say that uh, Fantasy Grounds College is a nonprofit um, community uh, company. We do not work for Fantasy Grounds LLC or Smiteworks. Uh, we are completely a self driven, self managed kind of uh, community effort. So, and some would even say insane. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty insane. <laughs> And we don't mind uh, helping SmiteWorks out with their bottom line or sales. Um, we don't mind helping uh, the community when they need help. They can come in here and talk to somebody. Um, we also don't mind uh, connecting uh, the community with the right people. So if you guys are not getting what you need from the college, I would recommend you go over to the Fantasy Grounds official server, and they do have one, and they have their own discord and their own community over there so that community is where i started and i would have to say they have a lot more avenues for playing games over there than we have at the college right now so if you're interested in playing games and meeting with other people that want to play then i recommend you go over to the uh the actual official fantasy grounds discord server um we are here to grow the community. Uh, we are not a divided or members only. So if you guys are 
willing to check out the actual official Discord server, which I recommend you do at some point, um, go ahead and try that out. I'm all for it. So, Numbers only. Wasn't that something back from the 80s? Yeah, I used to have one of those silly coats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, me too. Yeah, with the lapels. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Parachute pants and all. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> so, first of all, one of the things that most people struggle with in the beginning, especially game masters, is connecting with uh, like-minded players. So I'm going to cover this today. I wasn't planning on it, but I'm going to go ahead and cover this. So Ninja, you can you can go ahead and talk about this too. So when I first started my journey in Fantasy Grounds, it was not an easy one. Um, I had to learn all this stuff the hard way, and I'm still learning. I don't know everything. But one thing I know for sure is that it's difficult to get people to play with one another in any given time. So that journey takes a while to get a good group. And so you're going to search and you're going to look and you're going to hand pick the individuals that you're going to invite to your table. So as a DM, don't be discouraged. You're not going to find that group right away. It's going to take a while. So you can look here. You can look in the Fantasy Grounds official forums website. You can go to their Discord. You can also um, watch people on the streams like Rob 2 e GeoQuester, um, other community members such as uh, GM uh, Baboonski, um, Lazy Stooner, all those guys are part of this community. So maybe you want to play with one of those guys. Who knows? But uh, I just want to say that it's not an easy task to get people together. It is a very difficult task. You have scheduling issues. You have people that are working, and so on and so forth. So um, with that in mind, check us out at the college or check us out over at uh, the um, official Fantasy Grounds Discord server. Um, when I say us, I mean the community, not the college. Um, so check us out, meaning all of us. So if you guys want to get more help and more um, different genres and things, then I, I recommend that you do that. So now I can get on to the lesson. All right, so with all those disclaimers and things put in, in front, let's get into the lesson. So last time we left off, we were doing a combat session and we kind of got into a little bit of the tables. Now there's all kinds of different things that people stumble on when they first start running Fantasy Grounds. And number one was just knowing how to activate your library. So I'm going to kind of go through that just real quick. So here I have a library. And I have this opened up. And right now I don't have too many things active because I don't want to have a hundred different things loaded at once. That's a that's a no no as far as uh, Fantasy Grounds 3.3.3. Uh, um, it really doesn't handle too many books and tokens and maps open at the same time. So make sure that when you're opening things that you're going to use it and not abuse it. So you don't want too much stuff open at once because it will eventually cause your system to crash. So that's something you need to keep in mind. So right now I just have an adventure open, which is Rob Tui's uh, Unknown Whom. I have the DM's Guide, the Monster Manual, Player's Handbook Deluxe, and a couple of Rob's coding packages. Now you could, in a sense, put in other modules or other add-ons when you're making your own materials. I think for right now, this is good enough. I don't really want to open up too many uh, items and have it crash right during here in the live stream. So anyways, let's move on. So I go to the story tab and right now it's filtered to all. And so we want to make sure that this group is filtered to whatever that we're going to use. So for this tutorial, I'm going to go to the unknown whom. There's the credits that Rob set up. And in here are all the different things that Rob does for the community and for himself as far as a individual. 
And I want to congratulate him on getting his new position with Wizards of the Coast as a social media consultant. That is very cool. And also to the rest of his team. I haven't met all of you guys yet, but I'm looking forward to it. And also I'm looking forward to working with Smiteworks in the future on helping them um, teach people how to play. So anyways, that's the credits on the unknown whom. The next step is the different chapters that are involved. And when we did the last lessons, we were on chapter two. And we were looking at the awakening, which was part two of chapter two. And then it gave us a starting area. And in the starting area was some role play stuff, a message and a map. So then I clicked on the map. There's the map. If you guys remember that from the previous lessons. And then we ran the encounters from the map. So we had a starting area, which links to the story. And it links to this, which is all the role play and all the different setup for this uh, room. And then we also have the room in itself as a uh, pin to the map. So what we got now is a room where everyone would be gathering in the beginning of this adventure. And we have the encounter itself and it goes to a link to the next chapter. So A1, the room, encounter. Okay, so rat, rat, rat. That's where all the rats were, if you guys remember that. And then I think we put some spiders in there, if I remember last time. So this is basically the, the order that I've showed the rest of the people um, when they were joining us for the other two episodes. And we have those archived on YouTube. And again, I'm sorry for this rough video. This is live, unrehearsed. This is just uh, set up informational information. All right. So I think what I'm going to do now is focus on doing some sort of custom item. And so I have been using a product developed by a community member. Um, he goes by the name of Mask on the official Wizards of the Coast um, forums. Um, if you go to his server, you actually would know him as Steph. And so I've downloaded the latest and greatest uh, version. He's still working on it. It's pretty close to being complete for this type of uh, setup. And what it is going to be is called NPC Engineer. So I don't know, Ninja, have you seen this software yet? Uh, yes. Um, as a matter of fact, you were uh, taking out some more of your you know, limited time. Um, showing MPC engineer to one of our newest uh, students at the college, actually, and um, I like to sit on uh, on a lot of the uh, college classes myself because even though I've been running uh, fancy grounds for quite a while now, there's still some things that I just don't know, or maybe I've forgotten, you know, since of my old age and everything. So um, yeah, that's just another um, testament to. Uh, uh, Lay Ruin's uh, dedication to the college. I bet uh, Miss Lay Ruin is probably going to smack him across the head tonight for doing this stream for as long as these streams go. <laughs> 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 All right. So um, I think what we're going to start is once you have your library active and you have, like, let's say your monster manual. So we're going to open up the NPCs. And what I'm going to show you is how to create your own NPC. I kind of went over this in the second class, but not too in depth. So right now I have all my sources open, which probably isn't a good idea. So I'm going to go to the actual monster manual. And we do have uh, Rob Tui in the house. What's going on, Rob? Hey, Rob. All right. So first thing we're going to do is the NPCs. So Typically, when you buy things in Fantasy Grounds, um, especially, uh, you know, for DMs and things, th this is the one of the core uh, books that you probably would want to get if you're going to run your own games. Um, I'm not saying you have to get anything in particular, but if you're going to, you could, uh, you know, if you don't want to make a huge investment, you can make like a uh, payment monthly and that's a, a subscription based thing. So if you don't have the cash to, to dump out front, 
you can just pay for a subscription to the ultimate i think that's like around 10 bucks a month and then buy a couple of the core books so you can get the monster manual player's handbook and the dungeon master's guide and if you get those three books at least you can pretty much create whatever you want and so those are kind of like guidelines to help you they they, they, they give you templates and they give you examples and so that's kind of what I'm going to show you here in this segment. So for right now, most people, when they start, they don't realize that they can make their own copy or their own instance of one of these uh, monsters here in the monster manual. So I'm going to take, for instance, this Aarakocra. I'm going to open that up. Okay. So right now, the Aarakocra is all built up and done per the player's handbook from Wizards of the Coast. And so Smiteworks has converted this into the Fantasy Grounds format. And as you can see, it's already pretty much a done deal. It has a token and it's locked. So it's on read only. So if you see this reddish pink shading, bye babe, love you. If you see this reddish pink shading, that means it's read only. So if you click on that, you really can't do anything with that. And I would say probably about 60% of the DMs, I don't know, I can't really put a real number on it, but I would think that, you know, a good majority of the DMs are fine. They don't they don't really need to mess with it. They can just use it as is right out of the book. However, if you want to customize stuff and make your own stuff, um, having this here locked is, is kind of a tough thing to, to accept. You figured you invested in the book, you should have access to it. Well, you actually do. And so without ruining or damaging the product or changing the product that you've purchased, you can actually make another copy of this character sheet. And this would be for you to only to be used within your own copy of Fantasy Grounds. So what happens here is this Aarakocra is attached to the Dungeon Master's uh, Monster Manual. And a lot of times when I'm playing at my table, I don't want to just keep the standard character. I get kind of bored, honestly. And if you look at all these different actions here, all that stuff's coded and ready to go. It's pretty much as it is in the player's handbook. The only exception may be just the way it's laid out. And even that's pretty close. So there's an other tab on here where you would have an image and some lore. So those are things that come with some of the creatures is they'll have an image like that, and that is also protected. So technically you cannot edit or mess around with the artwork that comes with um, any of the official products. A lot of the third products aren't, uh, third party products are not protected, but this, these ones are. So you're not gonna be able to mess too much with those. So what I recommend you do is for one, um, you can take this same creature, this Aarakocra, and re-drag it into this MPC window. So let's grab this first entry, and this is from the monster manual. And all I did was take it out and drag it right back in, and now it's made another instance of it. And as you can see, there's no book here, so it's not attached to this particular um, book anymore. It's now a customized version or a copy of the original. So I'm going to pop that open. All right. So here we go. Here's our original um, copy of the original. And now, as you can see, it doesn't have that pink hue. It is locked, but it doesn't have the read only tag. So now it is editable. So now, technically, you can change the stats around. So I want this to be like an Aarakocra Chief. Okay. You know, he's a little bit tougher and a little bit, you know, more mean than the rest of the guys. He's kind of like a, a leader type. And what I noticed here is that his hit points are pretty low. So he can have up to roughly 24. So I'm gonna give him almost the max. 
I gave him 23. I'm going to bump his strength up a little. Gave him a 12. Gave him a little bit higher dexterity. Gave him a little bit of leadership and smarts. And gave him just a little bit more constitution. So those are the sort of things that you can edit and change that most people would go for. Now, if you wanted to change anything down here in the actions, you would have to sit here and edit each one of these items. And in that case, that would make for a long day. I mean, it's, it's doable. Everything that Fantasy Grounds offers is great because it's all built into the uh, interface. But it takes a long time. And so as a designer or a DM, this is the sort of thing that you're up against. So if you really want to learn how to do this, I recommend that you do it uh, the long way first. And then once you've done it a few times, then you'll really say, okay, this is a very time consuming. There's got to be a better way. And so I sought this out after struggling with this interface part for doing NPCs. And one of the hardest things that I had come across is being able to just make up characters that are in NPC format that are not in a PC format. And so that was a difficult challenge because I had to actually create it from scratch or I would use a template like this and I would edit it myself. And you have to learn the keywords and all these different things that go into these, these areas in order for it to work. And so all the syntax and all the keywords here have to be correct and have to be spelled correctly. You have to have all the right commas and semicolons. I mean, technically, you can take this talent attack and turn it into something else just by changing the title and a few of the uh, stats around. That's kind of an easy way to do this. See, it says melee weapon attack. It tells you the properties, if it's ranged or not, so on and so forth. If you had spells, you would have to list them down here. So I'm editing this section, adding a new, new area, basically. And then you would have to include your spell list and a spell casting uh, statement. And that way, this would be parsed into a magic user. So it's one of those things that would come into play if you were going to create a magical casting creature. But in this case, I'm not going to mess with it. I just want to show you that all this stuff here is a lot of work to do if you're not familiar with, with the game. And I know I struggle with these for months. I asked my players, I asked Zacchaeus from the uh, official forums, I've asked Rob, I've asked Geo, I've asked a lot of different people to help me with stuff like this. And it is a struggle. I mean, this is not an easy thing to, to stomach right away. But I um, would say that by just doing the few little minor changes that I made here, and maybe um, I wouldn't give this guy leather armor because he's probably flying, but you know, you could probably give him leather and it'd bump his armor class up a little bit, stuff like that. So that's one option that you have for making NPCs. There is another option, and I'm gonna take you to that, and that is called NPC Engineer. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a project that I've been behind for a while. Um, this project was going long before I, I joined the bandwagon, but uh, I was in a little bit on the little bit on the early side of it. And Mask has been developing this for the community and for himself. And we had him here a couple weeks ago, and he kind of showcased this product. But I want to show you how interesting it is and how quickly that you can create an NPC on your own. So let's get into that. And here we go. All right. So I'm going to load up this uh, NPC engineer. When this first became a thing, it really wasn't developed fully. It was one of those things to where it was still buggy. It still had a lot of missing things. But this, this software here, it has some promise to it. Now it has some little quirks and bugs and things, but it's a lot quicker, I think, than doing this. This is a long drawn out process. 
you should actually learn how to do this but this also would be good for a one-off if you wanted to make your own monster manual or your own bestiary this would take forever i think this is a good method to do if you only have one or two to do this here would be more or less if you're going to make more than one or two creatures and so i would recommend this over that method if you're going to make more than a couple creatures all right so here's the main interface for npc engineer i'm going to touch on some of these um, pro these subjects here that are pertinent to creating your own materials what i want you to do is consider that you know this guy is doing this basically for free he does have a donation so if you use the software and you like it please donate to him he you know he has a paypal me um, i've given him a couple bucks here and there and i think it's a great idea you can also check for the updates here and obviously i have the most up-to-date version which is good and you could take some of your old character sheets or your npcs or your old books and hand enter all this stuff in which would be in a sense kind of like doing it like uh, in fantasy grounds but this thing here kind of allows you to import text and there is a, a caveat to that meaning that it doesn't accept any old text. The text has to be in a standard uh, format. And so I'm gonna show you an example of what I'm talking about. So let's see. I have a D&D Beyond account, so I'm gonna go to that. Okay, I'm already logged in. And let me see, I'm gonna get a monster stat block up here. So this is homebrew. There's that word homebrew. And I'm going to pick up some monsters that were created by the community. So you can either create your own or view some homebrew. All right. So here's an example of an Aarakocra chief. Now I didn't make this. This guy Nathan made it. It was pretty cool. I use this as an example because it's the first thing on the alphabet. Okay, so the Eric Cocker Chief, there's the stat block. And as you can see how it's formatted, any um, text that you get from PDFs, they need to be embedded um, text. You cannot use photos unless you have a way to convert it. You want to use some quality PDFs that you own. Um, I don't condone piracy, but I know people have some strange stuff out there and they try to copy and paste the information from the PDF, it doesn't work because it's only text. Or excuse me, it's only a photo and not embedded text. So anyways, I'm gonna copy and paste this data from this uh, particular website. This is D&D Beyond, this is my own account. And so I'm going to utilize MPC Engineer to just convert this homebrew uh, creature. And so this is an Aarakocra chief. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this text. And usually I start from the bottom and work my way up, but you could start from up here, it depends on how you are. Okay, I hit control copy. I'm calling up uh, Notepad++. And this is kind of what you would use to check out your MPC stat blocks before you paste it into Fantasy Grounds or into any other um, software such as MPC Engineer. So I'm going to hit Paste. And there it is. So this I'm going to use this as a template because this is a pretty good format. So if you look at the formatting, where the page breaks are, the spelling, how all this thing, how all these things are lined up in here, this is how you would basically scan and check out all the different um, attributes and notes on this creature. So this to me looks pretty good. I know it's good because I've, I've used this before. But when you paste things from other sources, this is not going to be as pretty. So if you can keep everything like this laid out just like this, 
you're going to be in better shape. Um, he does have some input filters that will allow for different arrangements of these stats, but if they are not in a certain order or a certain way, um, MPC engineer will not parse it or will not recognize it correctly. So anyways, I'm going to take this data here and I'm going to copy it. Now I'm going to go back to MPC engineer and paste it. Okay. Now I'm going to click import text. And from here, I'm going to paste this information into the text area. So text import. I'm going to hit control V, which is a shortcut for uh, control paste. Unfortunately, control P is reserved for print. So you have to use control V. And there you go. Now, normally you wouldn't get these spaces. Um, from other sources, you'd probably get less line breaks and things like that. But being that this is specifically from D&D Beyond, Mask has made a filter or a custom filter for just it. So if you go to D&D Beyond as the source, it helps the parser recognize what exact format that this stat block is in. There's other ones. He's got Don John, RPG Tinker, D&D Wiki, Incarnate, Roll something rather, um, MS Word tables, and a couple alternate PDF sources, and then just your standard PDF or web source. So we're going to use this D&D Beyond. Now what I'll do is I'll go and look through the text and make sure this is, looks good. And then you have a preview window to the right. And so it looks pretty good. It looks like everything parsed correctly. There's no weird characters or, you know, sometimes actions will get bunched up together. There's just little things that you have to look for before you say go or before you import it. So this is one of those things where it takes a while to practice with it and get used to how it works. And parsing isn't fun if you don't understand it. I really don't still. I'm getting a, a little bit of a handle on it, but it's still still kind of a mystery to me. So anyways, uh, this is all the stats and how it's going to turn out in the actual um, character for the NPC. So I'm going to go ahead and click Import and Return. Okay, so here's your preview window. And here's all the different stats that it imported. And there's more, and we'll go through those. But for right now, I'm going to take a look at this. I don't want it to say Aarakocra Chief. I think that's just a generic title. And I'm going to make this a male. So I'm going to select male here. Okay. And that puts a male tag on this character. I'm going to make this uh, unique. What that will do is change the statements down there. So it says if the Aarakocra is flying or the Aarakocra can use its actions, it's going to say a name. His name's going to be Aorus. Okay, and this is a unique NPC. If I click name, it will put his name down in here in the stat block. If I click unique, it'll change some of the wording down here to reflect that. So some of the wording here will be changed once it's done parsing this. And I'm going to put a tag here. And since it is a humanoid, but I'm going to tag it as an Aarakocra because it is a playable character race, but it's also in an MPC format. So I'm going to click that. There we go. So now it is a medium humanoid Aarakocra in parentheses. That's what that added. And it changes some of this verbiage here once I parse it. And another cool thing is for the list options now to sort out the characters in Fantasy Grounds, you have these options to change NPC terrain types or lore. And it could be an origin. Most cases, you'd probably pick fantasy for the mythology. And for terrain type, since they're kind of more or less, you know, 
confined to the air for the most part. I might put them in grasslands, forests, mountains, hills, maybe even urban. It's kind of up to you in your campaign setting. But I think those are good for now. So there we go. There's where the tags will be added once you parse this information. And parsing is basically a way to compile all of the data that you're putting in into a usable format, which will be a module in this case. All right, so any resistances or vulnerabilities or any of those things, if you were to have them, would be counted in here. If you want to add or take away or something, this would be where you would do that. Skills. Um, he had a perception of 15, and that was his passive perception. So that's already captured here. But he also has the skill of perception, and so that is plus five. So that's captured already in this particular window. Uh, next thing is he doesn't really have... Uh, uh, human language because he's basically a bird man but as you can see he has Oron which is the the, the language of the avians um, other than that I wouldn't change anything in here I might put common if he was going to interact with with humans but there again I don't know if he can actually form the words or not so it's kind of up to you but I'll just put that in there for the sake of it so as I click there now it's added the language to the language list. Another thing I'm going to do is give him investigation. Gave him a couple skill points there. Um, perception, performance, persuasion. Uh, let's see. Maybe some acrobatics. Nah, that would be more or less implying you're on, on foot. Uh, I think he's good. Maybe some insight. I'll give him plus one on insight. Okay. So now that is added to this uh, character sheet. So you have your base stats. Those are all in. Um, challenge rating XP, you could calculate that if you need to. And let's see. Skills are all there and languages. And what I could do is um, for this, I can say NP, NPC understand languages selected but can't speak. So technically I could click that here and it would make a note over here. But I think for, for this tutorial I'm just going to leave it. But you can do instances where they understand the language but they don't know it or things like that. So it it's all depends on what you're making. Okay, so I'm going to go to the traits. Looks like he has a dive attack, which is looks right, and a shape changer. So he can use his action to polymorph into a hawk or into a different form. And so that's kind of a cool feature that this particular chief has. He's supposed to be an Aarakocra chief. And so if you wanted to add a new trait, I could put one of these uh, different uh, traits in here. And these were already added from previous builds. So I'm going to do Nimble Escape. Yeah, let's do that. So here's Nimble Escape. And since I called it unique, it will say Aris can take the disengage or hide action as a bonus action on each of his turns. So he's kind of uh, stealthy when he's up in the air flying around. And then in, in notes, I could put that this only apl applies when he's in the air. So he's going to get that only when he's flying. If he's on the ground walking around, he ain't going to escape that easily. Okay. And so I will add this to the trait list. There we go. And now it's flying only. So these are just how you would create your own descriptions and your own traits. You can make your own. And if you want to make a database such as this, this really didn't change any. I just added a note to it, and it did a unique instance of it. But if I wanted to make this permanent, what I'd probably do is rename it. I'll just call it uh, Air Escape or something like that. It's not a good title for it. 
but I'm going to call it that. A mid-air escape. I put my note back there. Now I'm going to add this, and I'm going to actually end up deleting the nimble one because that doesn't kind of doesn't make sense. So I'm going to add this. There we go, mid-air escape. And now this nimble is going to come off by deleting the trait. There we go. Now you have this mid-air escape. It's a note for one of his traits that he has for his particular unique build. Now, if I wanted to turn that into something I wanted to use later on for an Aarakocra uh, Chief Part 2 or one of a, a newer version of him or something like that, and I didn't want to have to retype anything, I could manage this by going to the options up here, and you would manage the traits, the weapons, or the actions. So in this case, it's a trait. So I'm going to call it Midair Escape. And I'm going to put the description in here. I forgot to copy it first. Now I'm going to click update. And technically that should have added it. So now I have that as a drop down option in this trait name section. So I'm going to hit close. And I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to come back because I think I believe I have to save this NPC first before it becomes available. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. Okay, the NPC is now saved. I clicked on Save NPC. And I'm going to continue to edit. There's a description. There's the actions. Click as a multi-attack, a spear, and a talon, which we'll get into that shortly. So now I'm going to see if that drop-down trait works. So I'm going to go to Traits. I want to put my custom trait in there. There it is, Mid-Air Escape. There we go. Hit Add to Trait List. It's added now. Now I'm going to save it just in case. Voila, it's saved. Now I'm going to go to these other tabs and show you what these are. So this would be if it had any spell casting or innate spell casting that was. This is the actual spell casting area. And which this, if it's formatted correctly, it will pick up all these spells correctly. Actions, so as you can see, he has a multi-attack, he has a spear attack, and he has a talon. I think I want to give him some kind of weird shriek or something like that. So rather than build it here, I think I want to build it in the options first. So this is going to be an action. So I'm going to call this uh, um, Piercing Screech. It's kind of misleading. I think I'll just call it Screech Attack or something. Yeah, while you're doing that, boss, it's, it's really cool that when you're making these custom traits and skills, they're saved in the database so you can go back to them at a later time. You don't have to copy and paste them somewhere else in a folder on your PC or whatever or your, your cloud drive or whatnot. It's constantly building that database for you to pull back from at any given time. That's correct. And, and so you could do this for weapons, traits, and actions, which will really speed up your process once you get this built up. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I'm going to call this a screech attack. Okay. And I'm going to put the description in there. So I would say he can probably do this attack every now and then, so not every day. So maybe it has a recharge, kind of like a breath weapon. Yeah, 
please? Dish me up a little. Yeah, while you're doing that, it's just really cool what you were talking about earlier about, you know, cloning a, you know, specific NPC and then make it, you know, making it truly something that you can really call your own because once you clone that NPC, you can unlock it, add a custom token and some extra descriptive text and like the regular uh, run of the mill powers and spells that the uh, NPC has. You can customize them by giving it your own flavor text, like you said, like Screech Attack. Mm -hmm. uh, it it can be like a horrible breath or um, con consistent nagging that can cause a confusion effect or whatever. So um, Fancy Grounds really gives you the ability to really customize stuff. You know, there is a lot of heavy lifting up front, but once you have it, you can pull back from it at any time. So any fledgling DMs or DMs that are new to Fancy Grounds, yes, this is a lot to take in, but here at the college, that, that's what we're here for. We want to help people get properly equipped so you don't get bogged down and overwhelmed with this uh, massive uh, cool software that's Fantasy Grounds. So if you right-click in this action, you can make it say NPC name capitalized, or you can have NPC body text, or anything that you need to base this on, if it's he, she, it, or whatever. In this case, it's going to be the NPC's name. So that tag there, where it would, I could actually get rid of this heiress. And technically, it should populate with the NPC's name. Thank you, Raymond. Okay, so I'm going to click Update. And that should do it. So now I have a Screech Attack available. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Close. And now I'm going to hit Edit Actions or Add Actions. And I should be able to drop this down and it should have the, at least the descriptive text. I didn't put any of the damage or stuff yet because I wanted to show you that. So, okay, I don't see it there. Okay, let's see. Hmm. There we go, Screech Attack. All right, so that's that. And see, it says Eris here. So I technically should have put that tag in the front instead of the end. So that, that was my bad. So I guess when you're using the, the pronoun for he, she, it, or that, you need to put it first, and then you'd put your dialogue afterwards. Okay, I'm going to hit... It's going to be a, I guess it'd be like a missile attack. Let's see. So, I'm going to say other action. It's going to put it over here, but there's no damage associated with it. And so what we could do is change it or edit to do a stun. So I'm going to edit it. Now I've added it already, but I didn't put any stun or any sort of condition. So I'm going to put stun on here. There we go. And so technically I would go back to that, the master um, feature, or in this case it's an action, and update it to say stun. All right, so that's that, and let's see, he has a spear, a talon attack, and a screech attack, and it'll recharge on a five or a six, kind of like a, a, a breath weapon. All right, and let's see. That way he's not overpowered. We can't do the screech attack every round. All right, so I'm going to make one more attack. Let's call it a dive 
So this is like a Hail Mary dive attack. So I can create it here or I can treat it as a weapon. I think I'm going to make it a weapon. So let's see. Okay. In this case, I'm going to do a dive attack. And I'm just adding this willy-nilly. I mean, I'm making this up as I go. And as you can see, I am editing the uh, weapon attack this time instead of just an action. And this is a melee weapon attack, sort of, kind of. Is it a ranged attack? Sort of, kind of. I think I'm going to keep it melee attack. And since it's not really a ranged attack, it's basically him dive bombing somebody. So it's going to be one target. It's not going to be magic or silver or adamantium or cold for forged. Um, I think I need to make it make sure it's bludgeoning. So I'm going to change that. So this is how he dive bombs. And let's see. I'm going to make this. Let's see. If he flies full speed, this is like a kamikaze attack. So I'm going to make this pretty beefy. So it's going to be a 1d12 plus one and I'm giving him the plus one the benefit of the doubt in case he rolls a low number I at least want him to do two points of damage without dying and if it was going to add any bonus damage I could add that here and then add any of these damage types so force would probably be a good one or any thunder maybe I don't know anyway so that's let's let's call it force even though it's not really a magical force, it's still a force type damage. And what I'm going to do there is normally um, this would not be added, but I'm just kind of trying to show you the different types of options. So I don't think I'm going to actually include that. But technically you could say if he dives from X amount of height, that this number would go up exponentially. In that case, I would probably put three or four different damage types so it would parse correctly. But in this case, I think I'm just going to leave it. So just leave it at that. Now you can add other text here. This would be where I would include that type of information. So I could say for every um, 10 feet, you would add 1d4. So I'm going to go ahead and change this die to back to 6. It's a little OP. Get rid of the bonus. And now I'm going to just add the statement. Oh, another another pun real quick. I keep coming up with these. Well, since you gave it force, wouldn't it be a Jedi Aarakocra? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> so let me add this. So this bird can technically wipe somebody out. So it would, he's going to add an additional 1d4 times the feet that have been fallen. So he's coming in like a bomb. So that's just kind of like another way to utilize the other text. Now, is that going to parse correctly? Probably not, but it is a notation to his uh, special attack. So now he has this dive bomb kamikaze attack. So I'm going to click update, and so that's going to be a dive attack, and there it is. So we know it does 1d4, and basically it'll be very similar to these attacks, but it's not going to parse correctly because it doesn't have the actual syntax that's required to make this a actual attack 
that's gonna that's gonna work right in in uh, fantasy grounds. So I'd have to change this around a little bit. So right now it's one d six plus zero, and I have to put this reach and all this other good stuff in here too if I wanted to make it correct. So it should look like this spear attack somewhat, other than the damage type. This should look like this, and it doesn't. So it has a lot to do with how you write these is how Fantasy Grounds is going to recognize it. So automatically, this attack here should probably just be a, a descriptive action as opposed to a coded action. And then your DM or your player would have to do this manually in the comp from the combat tracker, and that would be a real pain in the butt. So I don't think I'm going to add this attack, but I wanted you to see the process to go through to add different types of attacks. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to leave it at that. So here we go. I'm going to hit uh, update and close the window. And there we go. There's Aris. I'm going to save the NPC. And I'm going to go to his description. Okay. So here's Aris. Just a little bit of flavor text, nothing special right now. You get a preview of what it's going to look like in Fantasy Grounds. So you just that's just a shading. That doesn't actually change anything. And then you can um, highlight his name, and I'm going to put a header. So now he has a header format. And this text here, you could either italicize it or whatever. But I believe the functionality for this is it will be one of those things that give you a visual cue that it's been modified. So this is a chat frame. So we would select this and make it as one big continuous, uh, uh, this would be one big continuous um, chat frame that would come out in Fantasy Grounds when you parse it. So I haven't used this feature yet, so I'd like to see if it works. Okay, there's a note here that says if two or more consecutive paragraphs are selected, it will be treated as one contiguous one. So that means you probably only get away with this once. If you select more than one, it'll treat it all as one big text. So you have to be careful on what you're selecting. So I'm going to go ahead and click this chat box format. And that should add this in technically as a chat box that you can use in Fantasy Grounds for descriptive text. So now I'm going to check the character sheet while I'm here and make sure this looks good still. And it looks like, yep, actions. Yep, screech attacks there, the talon, the spear, the multi-attack. Yep, looks like it's right. Check this out. Huh. Okay. So this would be a proper name. Make sure all that's right. He has fly, speed. Yep, looks good. So I'm going to hit save because I don't want to lose my work. And at this point, you can select a token. Now, the tokens that you make are up to you, but um, I'm going to use one from the internet. Um, I'm not going to sell or distribute this, but I'm going to show you how this works. So this is going to be something that I would like you guys to know about for uh, Fantasy Grounds when you're making your own stuff. So let's go to the internet. I'm going to look for a... Aarakocra bird for the image. Now I know definitely not to use that one. That's the Wizards of the Coast. 
image. But I'm <laughs> but I'm just no, using no. this for demonstration, so I'm not too right. worried about it. Okay, <laughs> look at all these pictures. Wow, there's a token right there. But see, I don't know who owns the rights to any of these. So you have to be careful when you're using artwork. If you're going to include it in an official product or even on the DMs Guild, you have to have the clearance for these. So I am not going to be publishing or posting this anywhere. This is for my own personal use. So you can see I got a pretty nice variety here, but I don't really necessarily want to get all these photos here. You know, this would be nice if I can grab this token, but it's kind of a cheat. So I want to make one out of one of these guys. Here's the old classic one. I think what I'm going to do is type PNG afterwards. See if that helps. There you go. So there are some more PNG-like files. So these would be a lot easier to edit. So let's see. Here's a kind of a cool looking one. But I'm looking for one that'll be like a chieftain. So I don't want a real goofy. I mean, that one's a cool picture, but that's a Watsy picture for sure. Let's see. Kind of like this black and white one. That one's pretty cool. So this is where you're going to spend a lot of your time is actually picking out the artwork that you want to use. So I suggest that if you're going to make a bestiary, that you collect all your images first. Make a list of what you're going to make or what you're going to dig up and then get all your artwork together. And so you want to support your artist or get someone commissioned to make them for you. Or I think you can go to different places and buy them and download them and use them if you have a commercial license. So it's up to you how you acquire these. But there again, it looks like someone has taken this one and changed it into a token, which is what we're going to do right now. But I think I'm going to use this guy here or maybe this guy. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of torn about this. Let's just go with, uh, let's see. Let's go with this guy. So I'm going to save this. It's a JPEG. That's what I was afraid of. Don't want JPEGs. Let's see. Let's do this guy here. That looks like one. And he's kind of unique looking. I like that. He's the chieftain. I'm just going to say they have him as a monk, actually, but I'm just going to use him as an example. So I'm going to save this image to my desktop, I guess. Okay. So I found some art that I'm going to use. Again, this is stuff that's you know, it hasn't been cleared. So if you guys do your own, make sure you get it cleared, especially if you're going to sell it online. All right, so here's the Chieftain. Now I'm going to go back to MPC Engineer. And I'm not going to use that as a token, but I could. Let's, let's see how that works. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to my desktop. Which is real messy, by the way. There he is, right here. Well, if a DM has a, a clean uh, desktop, he or she is doing it wrong. <laughs> or they're severely organized, and they spend more time organizing than actually making stuff. <laughs> yeah, that too. Okay, so there's the token. Okay. Now, he doesn't have a actual photo. So you could click a portrait here. In this case, I think I'm going to use that picture that I downloaded as the image. I'm going to use that for his image. And I'm going to make this into a token. So I'm going to go to Roll Advantage Token Stamp. Uh, 
Um, I don't know if you can see this website, but if you do a search for rolladvantage.com slash token stamp, there it is. I recommend it. It's an awesome tool. Okay. So I'm dragging the image on the web page itself. There he is. Over to the right, that is a preview. This is where you're actually going to edit and move things around. So I want a bigger, just a, basically a picture of his profile. Maybe a little bigger. What do you say, boss? Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, it's another cool thing because um, I actually didn't know this. You know what you're doing now. You could actually just pull it straight from the website. I thought you had to download the the uh, picture, then you got to upload it there. You can just note straight, just drag well, it I, straight there. I did download it temporarily, and I put it here. I just drag it over. Yeah. Yeah, but in the uh, pre well, one of your previous videos, you actually just drug it straight from the uh, website into here and did it. So okay. that, yeah, still cool to know that you can do, you have both options available to you. Yep. Okay, so there's our token. And I dragged the corners up. I didn't pull this because it'll stretch it. And if you notice, he doesn't have all this background. And that's why we would use a PNG file. So I'll show you how to do a PNG file shortly. So now what we're going to do is going to add a border. I, I like squares. Some people like circles. But if you click this circle up here, you can pick the type of ring or border. So here's all the different types. You can, there's different shapes, sizes. I mean, it's got a lot of different variations. This yeah, one I'm going to yeah. use... What's that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. All right. I'm going to click this here. That puts a trim around here. And I like it because it's a smaller one. It's not too obtrusive. I click it again to get rid of it. Now there's a frame around it. Okay. And now I'm going to click the border tint. I think I'm going to use a darker color. Actually, the lighter color was nice. That'll work. Okay, and now I'm gonna click the shade. So you can affect the shading on the character, but it looks too dark. So I'm gonna leave that where it is for now. And I'm gonna do some contrast here where it's a little brighter. Yeah, you can't have our Smurf era Cockra being to a too dark in there. His, yeah. <laughs> he's been in the sun too long. <laughs> right. Okay. So that looks a little better. Huh. There we go. Maybe it's a little tad dark. So I'll leave it like that. And if you want, you can add text and a text box also, in which I'm not going to do. So now I can actually download this as a photo or as a particular token. It would, this will default to token.png. So this is actually instant number four because I've downloaded four different ones today. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Fantasy Grounds, uh, excuse me, the MPC Engineer interface. And from here, I'm going to change this token. I'm going to get rid of this photo and swap it out with the one I just made. So, I know it's in my downloads folder. There he is. Voila. So there's the token. All the stats. Here's the stat block preview. Skills. Actions. Description. Which isn't a very good description, but just an example. 
and I'm going to hit save. So I have saved that MPC. Now I have a project that's already loaded, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and load a new project. So you hit file, manage project. And as you can see, I've already filled out all this information. GM view only, I locked it so it's harder to manipulate. You can actually lock the records so that you cannot um, edit it. And it already has the module path by default. And the target parser is going to be parse engineer, which is built into the software, but you can use Zeus's or K99's parser if you know what you're doing. Okay, so there's that. I have the images, tokens, NPCs selected. Module test 01. I just kind of did that for the sake of naming. Um, this spell thing is not implemented yet, but it's coming soon. So you'll be able to add a database of spells. And I'm going to click save and close. And I'm going to rewrite over this. There we go. Save and close. That's done. And now I'm going to click add to project. So this NPC was added to Project Test 01. I did it again to make sure it's in there. One other cool feature, you can export this as an RTF file, as a text file, or as XML, or as HTML. So let's look at the HTML format. So if you're making a website or a book or something and you want to use Fantasy Grounds, uh, and you want to make something that's beyond just uh, parsing and you want to make a PDF, you can save it as HTML. And I'm going to save it to my desktop so I know where it went, which will be a nightmare because it's a mess. Okay, I hit save. Okay, now I'm back in Fantasy Grounds. Now I'm just searching for the project that I just exported. There we go. Here he is right here. And there's your output. So now you could technically copy this information or put it into a PDF if you wanted to or some other format if you needed to. So that's just a quick... Uh, little shot to see what kind of export options you have so now I'm done with him now that he's all done and I've exported him I added to him to a project which would be a module file basically I'm going to click this parse button this is dragon icon and as you can see it's added him and all the other things that I've added and I even add all the groups it parsed okay, it created a database. There's no red marks, so that means there was no errors. So you wanna kinda of look at this before you hit close, make sure that it parsed correctly, because it'll kick back errors if there's anything wrong. Now I'm gonna to have to close Fantasy Grounds, because when you add a new module or you update it, I believe it's a good idea to go back to the launcher. 
That way I don't get any corruption or anything like that. Good old handy Notepad++. I need to learn how to use this better. But this, this tool here is invaluable if you're going to be making your own stuff. This is what you want to use. So we have any questions so far out there yet? Uh, no, not at the moment. I, I just put a message out there in chat. If you have any questions, please let us know. Um, just real quick before you move on, boss, just um, how really important is it to really be organized? Just give a quick uh, synopsis on that for us real quick. Okay, so it is pretty important. If you're taking on a big task, such as building a monster manual of your own, let's just say you're going to make a bestiary. There's different ways to approach it. I'm kind of doing this willy-nilly, kind of unplanned. But if I was real serious about this and I was going to be creating a, a monster manual of my own, I would have all the artwork figured out, a list of all the creatures, and I'd have all the lore or the background information for each creature already done. That way, when I do that process, it takes a lot less time. You're not hunting and digging around and jumping through websites and downloading images. All that stuff should be done up front. So when it says it's important, if you have the time, then you can just do it as you go. But if you're really serious and you're trying to make a project and you have deadlines and things like that, what I want you to do is organize your, your folders. So you need to take and put a project file folder, get a spreadsheet of some sort, or a notes list, like a checklist, and go through each one of those creatures that you're going to put in your list. And you're going to build all those up before you even put them in uh, MPC Engineer, and also before you put them in the... Uh, parsing tool and then once it goes to the parsing tool it'll be done for fantasy grounds and that'll be a lot easier and a lot better in that case so you will save yourself a big headache if you do all that stuff up front and that kind of holds true with everything so if you grab all your images and your maps you grab things like uh, handouts tokens, all those things. Get all that stuff made ahead of time. Organize them into individual folders. So one would be portraits, one would be tokens, one would be the lore sheets, one would be all the stat blocks and things that you're going to use, or at least links to where you're going to get them. And just do it that way. And if you do that, it will take the time and cut it down quite a bit. And so you need to create a workflow. So try to do things a certain way. Once you figure out what's good for you, you try to stick with that. And that's what I recommend when you're building your own assets and things. So hopefully that answers your question and also tells the audience what's up with that. Oh, yeah. With a uh, workflow, you definitely hit the nail on the head, sir, because with workflow, and, and like you said, again, once you find out what works for you, because what works for you may not work for other people. So you have to really drill into it and really just hammer home the point. Like, okay, I do my stuff like this. What, you know, matches up with that. And then once you get it down pat and you do it maybe like two or three times, you build a couple of modules, you know, get those under your belt. You're really going to realize how quickly the, the process goes and it's like boom baby I can knock out stuff with no problem at all I don't need that much help and then I get more time to run my games you know what I'm saying instead of constantly working behind the scenes getting distracted and getting frustrated yeah that's how I used to approach this is I would put in a story element and then I go oh crap now I need a photo so then I go digging around in the internet looking for photos and downloading pictures. And then I realize, crap, I don't like the background or I don't like that photo after all. And so in doing that, I've already wasted a half an hour just on that. And so that's what I'm saying is you got to kind of have a plan before you go in. 
Exactly. <laughs> I probably need some. Uh, there should be a class for that too, so I know <laughs> I need it. <laughs> I hear you. So in this case, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own PNG real quick. It's not going to be perfect, but it just give you an idea. I'm using the free program called GIMP. And what I'm going to do is get rid of those background um, noise that I don't want to use for my particular campaign. So I'm going to open up something, something that needs to be changed. And while Lerun is doing that, um, just be sure to actually, you know, search YouTube for uh, just say fancy grounds, but then start digging in a little bit more to what you're looking for, like making adventure modules and stuff like that. Because sometimes if you just go and say just fancy grounds, you'll just get the same videos over and over again. There's a lot of people that have done videos in the past the format may be dated but the things still hold true and they still stay relevant when it comes to module making uh token creation and stuff like that um there's one particular guy that i uh loved watching his videos uh i'm trying to remember his name oh keith hershey jr uh -huh. um he's got a ton of old videos so like <laughs> i mean you'll instantly see how old they are because newer people to fancy grounds won't even recognize the uh uh um the interface that it has now i i think he still had the he was still in the twos of the um iteration of fancy grounds so you'll see that the the ui is completely different from what it is now but um he's very thorough so, you know, go ahead and check his videos out. And, you know, of course, there's other people, too. So make sure you uh, check out all the people that uh, do videos for Fancy Grounds. Right on. So anyways, this is a, a folder that uh, I've been working with for Tomb of Annihilation. And so here's this bag of skulls. Okay. So I'm going to just pick this. It looks fairly easy, hopefully. Okay. So I don't really want necessarily that blue background. I just want the bag of skulls itself. So what you're going to do is, first of all, this is GIMP. It's a free program. And I'm going to take away this background color here. And so in order to do that, you click um, Layer, Transparency, Add Alpha Channel. Now you won't see anything, but that's actually creating a layer underneath this image. So now you click this little fuzzy tool, which is this little wand looking thing. And it changes my tool over here as to this, the different uh, settings. I'm gonna do feathered edges because I kind of like the more natural fuzzy edges instead of a hard line. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. I'm gonna change the radius to three. I don't need a big radius on it. I just want a real light radius. So what that does is kind of fuzzes it up so it looks more natural. And then this threshold changes how much it's going to analyze the colors in here. So I'm going to go ahead and click and see what happens. As, as you can see, it took out this whole area. And I'm going to hit delete. Just got rid of all that. Just got rid of all that. So you get the idea. Now there's a few spots I have to touch up. So I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna hit control and roll the mouse. Now, okay.
Okay, so there's them skulls. All right, so there's the skulls. Um, I've eliminated most of the uh, the background image. There's still a little bit of a blur here. I don't really care about that. I'm not worried about the string so much. And there's a lot of extra space out here that doesn't need to be here anymore. So there is an option here I'm going to use. And it will basically take away some of that excess. So there's an auto crop here. Auto crop image. As you can see, it took away the excess we don't need. Or if you want to keep a little room there, you can undo it. See, it took away this whole half here. All right, so I can export this now. So I'm going to... Um, basically export it as a different file type. It's probably a JPEG now. I want to export it as a PNG file. So export as PNG. And I'm going to do export images. And it has a drop down. So I'm going to call it a PNG file here. That's going to be the extension or the file type. Okay. And now I think I'm going to go ahead and drop it on my desktop, which I hate, but I'm going to do it. And there we go. And now make sure that the background color isn't there because so it's going to save all those checkered lines and dots back there. And for compression level, I usually leave it in about the center. That changes the file size and things like that and the quality. All right. So just so you guys know, I'm not an artist. I don't know what I'm doing, but this is what I've learned so far. So I'm going to go ahead and close now. I've already exported it. I'm not going to save it or nothing in this case. It's asking me if I want to save this. You know, I'm not going to. I'm going to discard it. I want to keep the original. So I've discarded that now. Now let's see what happens. All right. Yep. Okay. There's that. That. Let's go back and load Fantasy Grounds. And while this is loading, um, I just want to thank you guys for, for coming in and, and checking this out. I'm going to go over a few other things, I think, uh, in a couple more classes. I don't know when I'm going to broadcast them. But this covers, you know, quite a few things. We went to character creation. We did the tokens and also the editing of a photo to turn it into a token. So technically, I could take that skull and crossbones and turn it into one of these tokens. Now why I would do that, I don't know, but it could be a map token as opposed to an NPC. It could be a treasure spot, anything. But I would do the same process. So instead of using the the Aarakocra here, I could just drag over that skull and crossbone. Let me see if I can find it. There it is, bag of skulls. Oops. There it is. I'm going to drag it over. Okay.
There we go. Like you were saying, Laurent, um, you said that you're not a, uh, you know, artist or anything. Mm -hmm. So basically yep. what you're trying to tell, you know, DMs, look, you don't have to have, you know, schooling, a higher education to do this stuff. You just got to have a passion for it, right? Yeah. Because I know I'm definitely, <laughs> if I was to ask people to get paid for what stuff I did, I, I think people would be asking for refunds at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so there's but, the skulls. Now, I don't really like that background, so I'd probably change it. That's a little better. Change the frame. There we go. Now you could use that for a map asset or anything you want. And I don't have to use this exclusively in anything in particular. I, matter of fact, I'll show you another technique um, using uh, Illustrator. But before I move on to that, let's go back to our actual um, fantasy grounds. Okay, it's finished loading. All right. So again, I'm going to go to the library. I have to activate the module. It's not loaded. And I remember the name of the module was test. There it is, test 01. Click load. Now I'm going to go to the library, which is here. And there it is. And this just happens to be all NPCs. So here's the reference of it. It's listed by alphabetical, challenge rating, class index, mythology, and terrain type. So if you go like this, it'll add all these. And here's Aris, the one that I made earlier. There he is. There's a little token that I associated with him. This one is unlockable because it was DM only, but if I would have clicked that other option to, to, to basically make it to where you can't edit, it would be read only. And let's see. Looks like it parsed okay. Yep. Oh, that didn't work right. So this must not be quite right yet, this uh, text here. What I was trying to achieve is this. All right. So now what I'm going to do is turn this to a chat box. This is how it was supposed to turn out. That way when you click on this, it would come over here into the chat window. That's what I was hoping for. And if I would have created more lore, that would have been populated in here. Oh, the image didn't carry over right because I didn't use a JPEG. That's why. So next time I will use a JPEG for his photo instead of a PNG file. So that threw off the parse on that. So that's a lesson learned. So anyhow, that's how you do this. Um, this is uh, probably going to be a quicker way to make your own bestiary. I've already made a few others. Here's an Aarakocra chief. That's the one I had from the D&D uh, &D Beyond. There's an armored T-Rex. Here's Shilga, the snake sorceress. I made her from D&D uh, &D Beyond, kind of reskinned it, changed a few things around. As you can see, she has all these spells and things. These are things that were parsed with MPC Engineer. She has her token. And she has her spell list here. If you notice that this list was included in the description. And as you can see here, this information didn't turn out right because that chat box thing isn't quite right. And if you use the image right, that's what it should have come up. 
So that's all that was, is I didn't use the correct um, image format. I used a PNG instead of a JPEG for the portrait, but the token needs to be a PNG for the in the case of the parser. Okay. Let's see what our token looks like. Uh, while you're doing that, sir, uh, Rob Tui said that your voice drew, uh, dropped down pretty bad. I think it's back to normal. Um, Rob, if you do hear a change anymore, just let us know. Thanks, Rob. All right, so any questions about that? So these are just some of the tools that I've used to create stuff. Um, this is just an example. Um, you'll find your own your own uh, methods to doing this. But I'm going to show you one more thing before I go. And I think I'm going to continue this on more of a little bit of a creation side of things. And if you guys aren't aware of it, um, Rob and I and some guests um, from the community are going to come on and we're going to discuss different aspects of Fantasy Grounds. It's a new show coming up. It's starting, I believe, uh, about a week after Rob gets back from his uh, hiatus. And we're calling it All Things Fantasy Grounds. So it's a going to be breaking Fantasy Grounds in smaller bite-sized uh, steps, roughly about an hour for the show. It's going to be live streamed on Rob's Twitch channel. So that's twitch.tv slash Rob2E. And we also have it posted as announcements in the Fantasy Grounds College section for announcements and for the uh, upcoming events. So if you're part of the college or you're brand new and want to figure out how to play Fantasy Grounds, um, you can either go to Fantasy Grounds College on the internet and uh, there's we have a fantasygroundscollege.net and there's a join link there. And you can also go to the official Fantasy Grounds forums and from there, you can learn a lot of good information. There's a lot of good help there. And they also have a Fantasy Grounds official um, Discord server. So if you guys want to learn more information or you want to start running some games or playing with a, a bunch more people, there's also that too. So anyways, I'm going to show you one more thing before we go. And this is Publisher. I really love this program. I really wish I would have discovered this a long time ago. <laughs> Uh, Rob says that it's uh, February 11th on uh, Sunday and Tuesdays. Perfect. All right. So basically, I'm going to bring up some things that I've already made in Fantasy Grounds or for it. So these are just an idea of what you can do with, with Publisher. So this is just a flyer that I made that I really didn't finish, but I did get it out, but it only went out to select people. And that's because I wasn't completed. But these are different things that you can do with Publisher. And you can move things around, change format text, things like that. But I'm gonna show you something cooler. Uh, let's see, click new. I'm gonna start with a landscape. Okay, so this is a blank slate. So right now there's nothing on here. So let's see, I'm going to set up the page and design a kind of like a cover or a poster. So you go to home. Page design, now I'm gonna change the margins. So I'm gonna leave, I don't want any margins in this. Actually, I might do a narrow one, just have a frame of reference. So that puts this little frame here. Now I'm going to grab an image from the interwebs. So background um, is where I'm gonna select from. And you can do these solid colors. So you can do something like that. I'm going to undo that because I want to get something cool. So I'm going to find a, like a cave or something. So let's go to a background, go to more backgrounds. 
and I'm going to use different fills and you can use your own textures and things like that. In this case, I'm going to use a picture or a texture fill. So I'm going to click that. You can either select from a file that you already have on your computer or online. I'm going to use online. I'm going to find a photo on here. Now, the statement here is you are responsible for respecting others' rights, including copyright. So just keep that in mind when you're taking images off the internet, don't include it in your product unless you absolutely know you have the rights to do it. So I am not going to be doing anything with this, so I'm going to use whatever I feel like. So in this case, I'm going to look for a cave. I'm going to call it Fantasy Cave. Because what will happen is I'll get a bunch of caves that are actually photos. So let's check that out. Okay, supposedly it says these results are tagged with Creative Commons licenses. And so you'd have to review those to understand what those mean and what that includes. Or you can click show all results where you don't even care what they are. You're just going to use them. So I think in this case, I'm going to just uh, utilize one of these cave photos. So this would be a subterranean type thing. I think I'm going to use that. That comes from DeviantArt. So obviously someone owns the rights to that. Even though it's tagged as Creative Commons, that doesn't necessarily mean it is. So I'm going to hit Insert. And I'm going to hit OK. Not a very good picture. Kind of fuzzy. Don't like that. So I'm going to start over. Okay. So I'm just kind of making this up as I go. So again, I'm going to click the picture fill. I'm going to go online. This time I'm going to get more specific. I call it Underdark Cavern. There we go. Clicked on insert, clicked OK. Here we go. That's a cool photo. All right, so obviously this is somebody's cave. They must have made this. I don't know who. Uh, whoever you are, sorry if you don't like this. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and use this as a backdrop. So now what I'm going to do is insert a different kind of asset, which would be maybe those skull and crossbones. So I'm going to hit insert pictures instead of online. I'm going to hit pictures. I'm going to look for those skull and crossbones that I made earlier. There they are, the bag of skull, the bag of skulls. All right. Now, as you can see, they're, they're hanging by a string, and it's cut off. So I'm probably going to center this on the top so that it looks more natural. There we go. Now I'm going to shrink it a little. Put that off to the side. There we go. Another thing is getting the idea of proportion. That's one thing you have to get used to. You have to kind of understand, like, if you're standing here, how big would these skulls be? So that's what I'm doing. I was playing around with proportion. Yeah, sort of, kind of. All right. And now I'm just going to move it around and see where I want to place it. So this could be a warning or something like that for this cavern. Or maybe it's just to scare people off, whatever. 
I'm going to go ahead and recolor it because it looks a little bit too bright for this background. So you have some options here to recolor and you can do more variations. Um, I didn't like that. So I'm going to go back. I'm just going to do a correction, which this would be just a, a shading correction. I think that looks a lot better. What do you think, Ninja? Uh, yeah, yeah, that looks all right. I mean, at least it's not bright, like it didn't make sense. <laughs> right, it's not, it's, it's not a neon sign like Eat at Joe's or something. Correct. <laughs> and now I'm going to put this shadow on here. See, now it's casting a little bit of a shadow to give it more of a feel that's more cavern-like. So that's one thing that I've done is just add this as a custom item. Thinking I like it over there, kind of out of the way. Uh, Cat Wizard Grace says recommend a slight green shade to match the cave light. There we go. So let's do that. Hmm. So here's more variations. More colors. Now this is where you can get into the tones. Okay. I like that. Let's see how that looks. <laughs> now let me recolor it. Yeah. kind of looks cool but it's a little bit too much yeah so I want to darken that and maybe like make it a little less like that and more subtle so let's see recolor more yeah colors. while you yeah while you're doing that not only proportion it, you know that's also and very important but also the uh, you don't want to have one asset in your picture to dominate the whole entire thing you want everything to kind of blend unless you're going for that you just got like the cave background this nasty string of skulls hanging there and you want to really to mm -hmm. take precedence but you kind of want it to be part of the backdrop not the main focus right that looked a little better, actually. Yeah. All right. Not exactly what I was looking for, but at least it gives it that green shade that he was asking for. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is bring in another picture of some kind of creature. What do, what do you guys want? What's what's the Twitch say? What kind of creature? Goblin? Troll? What? All right, peeps. Go ahead and sound off. Uh, what do you want to see? Uh, like a... A goblin, a crazy-looking kobold, a, a carrion crawler, an ant hag. What? What? Uh, what do you want to see? <laughs> Rob Dewey, Tiamat. Uh, uh, yeah, Cat right. Wizard. Cat Wizard says, uh, "What level monsters live here?" I would say, like maybe a CR three, the most. Oh, Shazar says a, a mimic. A mimic? <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. That'd actually be kind of cool, actually. I, I mean, it'd be a little weird, but still, it would be cool at the same time. Yeah, it would. All right, so let's do that. So let's grab something. What was the first one? Not the mimic, but what was the other? Uh, Tiamat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rob, too. <laughs> How about a green Tiamat? <laughs> a green, yeah. <laughs> now, let's make it a, Tiamat. make it a, uh, you know, just for the sake of sake, let's do a troll. Yeah, how about a troll? Okay. You know, I spoke uh, to a troll earlier. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty scary. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I think it got chased back under the bridge. Um, yep. 
uh, Cat Wizard said, is a cave slime too strong? No, let's do that. Let's do a slime. Online pictures. I'm going to do a slime.png. See what comes up. Nice. Rob Tui said, uh, lol, I, I spoke to a troll earlier. <laughs> <Hilarious>. <laughs> well, I don't like the way those look. They look a little too kiddish. So I'm going to click show all results. Now we're getting somewhere. Hey, I like that. That might work. This, that, and the other. You don't want to go for the uh, Dragon Warrior slime there? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of cool. Whatever that is. <laughs> Cat Wizard says, recommend all source to something like Jello images. Yes. Yeah. Then you're going to look like a, a, what you call it, a gelatinous cube. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to grab a few different examples and just see if any of that works. So let's yeah. try that. Or we might get a pictures of Bill Cosby. <laughs> okay, they're over <laughs> here now. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's put this up somewhere. That's going to be off the screen pretty much. So when we render this, this will, this will be gone. Actually, probably anything on this border. And that's why I'm saying I use that for a frame of reference. Right. Now, this thing is going to look kind of weird because it's going to be out of proportion. Well, let's put that down there. It's like that. And I don't really like the way it looks, so I'm going to find a rock to stick it on, like a surface. So I'm going to yeah. look for some rocks. Try a stalagmite. Not seeing anything good there. Holy cow, we even got a green one. There we go. We hit the mother load. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's do this big ugly rock here. That ought to be the right proportion, the right shape. So I'm going to import that. Now I'm looking for PNG files. These are already cut out, so I don't have to do that work. I'm lazy. Okay, big old rock. I'm going to put that there. And I am going to recolor that. That's crazy. <laughs> that was a, it looks like a big old potato. <laughs> That's a little better with the darkness on it. Yeah. Uh, Cat Wizard said, sorry, I, I crossed cave slime with a gelatinous cube. I thought they were the same thing. Please disregard. No, it's all good, brother. You know, this is what these videos and classes we do for. You know, we want to be creative and if yep. things get, you know, misset or whatever, you know, we want to go ahead and clear them up. So, no, man, it's no problem at all, sir. No problem at all. All right. So that's the uh, the rock that we might use. And as you can tell, this thing went behind it. Mm -hmm. So you can bring it forward. So this, this image here, I'm going to bring it forward. There's a bring forward button. 
And now it should lay near the rock. Nope. Bring it forward. Huh. I'm going to send this guy backwards by one. There we go. I think I had them both on the same layer. Uh, yep, that rock. Yep, makes yep. me want to have a baked potato now. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks run. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. There again. Brought that forward. Put that there. Move that there. Put that right about there. So now it's just getting the proportions right in the sizing. Okay. Oh, I see what you're going for. It's kind of like the slime is dripping down and leaving deposits on the rock. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> George Jarvis, he says, dark <laughs> cave. Oh, no, death will wage everyone at the end of the cave. <laughs> Feels like we're uh, uh, playing a uh, doggone it. What's the name of the game? Uh, Shadowgate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So add a little shade. That shadow helps a lot. It makes it blend in better. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And now, darken that up a little. Yeah, now we're talking. I mean, it's starting to look a little bit more natural somewhat. Yeah. Okay. Now I see that this all is still a little bit off. Something like that. It's not going to be perfect. Right, right. George Jarvis says, I was thinking more of hell than death. Well, you know... Yeah. Maybe this is the entry, uh, one of the uh, entry ways to uh, Jubilex. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to darken this one a little bit more. I think it's fine. All right. Now, what we're going to do is... <laughs> Shadzar says the potato has a moldy eye now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Does kind of look that way, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. So this is just playing around with the publisher. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing around. Anyway, so this is kind of how the, the layout is. So it looks like a slime. Somewhat. All right, now I'm going to make, here's where the magic happens. So I'm going to try to blend that in a little bit more. So I'm going to give this the illusion that this is all part of one photo. 
And so what I'm going to do is find a spider web to put over the top of this stuff and a couple more rocks. Cool. Uh, while you're doing that, I think we may have come up with a new uh, uh, monster for the monster manual. Uh, George Jarvis says an eye potato. <laughs> you, wanna, <laughs> you call it an eye tato? And, uh, <laughs> eye tater. <laughs> he said, eye tater. And uh, he says 1d4 damage eye bite. <laughs> I <laughs> <Eye> gouge. <Nice. laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So let's look for. I need a. What's the other? A stalagmite and a stalactite. Let's try that. Yeah, huh. people. If if you have any uh questions about what he's doing or whatever, please feel free to uh, type them out in chat and he'll try to answer them the best he can. See, this is stuck on Creative Commons only. That's why it's so limited. Yeah. But if I clear all the filters, there you see. Now we got some more stuff to work with. Yeah. But then again, these images are not clear for publication. So let's do this. I don't like ice. That just looks too metallic. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Hell of it. I'm going to take this. Maybe that. We'll see. Okay. Grabbing myself some choices here. <laughs> yeah. some more of those. Yeah, that'll, that'll do for now. All right. So obviously I'm not going to use this because it's cut off. You see the top of that? It's already hacked. So that's a no-go. Maybe. That's a maybe. And change this. Put some shadow. All right. So now I'm going to actually copy this and flip it around. see how it's like that and turn that mm -hmm. baby upside down so it just gives it a just enough an illusion to look like it's part of the the photo right I'm not trying to obscure our nice little potato, because that does look pretty good. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to make another one of these. This time I'm going to flip it the other way. Opposite. There's that. 
And as you can see, these both are cut off right here. Yes, Cat Wizard Gray says the cave, the cave potato. And George Jarvis says the almighty cave eye potato. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's kind of gives you guys an idea. I make that a little bigger. All right, so now I'm done kind of fiddling around. Just to give you an idea how to lay this thing out. This is not perfect by any means, and I'd actually do a lot more research ahead of time before I did all this. Right, but it's really cool because you know just just fiddling around with it, you know you've you've kind of made it an adventure hook already. Like what yep. is at the end of that cave? What, what has the intelligence and skill to actually hang those skulls, group them together and hang them up there? You know, what, you know, what lies down there? All right. So now I'm going to insert some text. So I'm going to draw a text box right there. I'm going to change the size of the text a little so we can read it. Change the text color because it's too dark. George Jarvis says, what will kill everything? The monster I got of potatoes of all baking. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm going to change the text type. I don't like that text. <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Attack of the killer potato. <laughs> Attack of the cave slime and potato. <laughs> and potato. <laughs> There we go. Nice. It's got the old uh, vampire blood of Dracula look. Technically, yeah. I should turn it green. I see that, okay. but it will it'll <laughs> it'll clash too much with the, what's already there. Yeah. Now, what you can do is take this stuff and export it out as a PDF or you can export it as a file folder or you can do it as a JPEG. I think I'm just going to export it as a JPEG. File, save as, actually <laughs> export. Yeah. Okay, change file type. <laughs> Killer Titan Potato. It's going to be JPEG. Normally I'd render it to a PNG, but this isn't a really serious thing. All right. There it goes. It's going to go to the desktop, hopefully. I think we need to take the uh, body of a Cyclops, remove the head, and put the uh, Titan Potato on top of his head. <laughs> All right, so that's just one half of the steps that it take to do this. So now I'm going to open it up in Corel, which is a lot like Adobe and things like that. Adobe has a similar program. I think it's Illustrator or something like that for laying out pages. So it's very similar yeah. to the Microsoft thing. I'm going to hit Open. Yes, Chad. Sorry. I don't know what would you call... <laughs> out there in the chat. What would you give a name to a titan <laughs> that had a potato for its head? What would you call it? <laughs> <laughs> a tater titan. 
Tater Titan. Put Titan. <laughs> oh my okay. goodness. Here we go. So let's change the image to resize it. I'm going to go by percentage because this page is really big. Okay. It's still big. This is only 40%. Oh, wow. So I'm going to do it again. Let's try that. That's a little better. There we go. Yeah, there's there's been a couple of suggestions. Uh, uh, Cat Wizard Gray, I can actually say this name, the uh, Titan. That's what you said. Uh -huh. That name, that name sticks. He says. Yeah, but Titan. Yeah, but Titan. <laughs> the Potato Titan. From the <laughs> land of the Idahoans. <laughs> <laughs> Idaho Sheeta. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now I'm gonna do a couple things to kind of blend this together. So let's see, brightness and contrast, we can play with that a little bit. Kind of bump it down. Kind of a sweet spot. That kind of helps big, make other things pop. And since this is the monster, supposedly, right here, I'm going to do a field of depth so it kind of acts, accentuates this area in here and kind of blurs the edges. But first I'm going to do, let's see, digital noise removal. This will kind of help blend it in as well. So as you can see how it's got these sharp edges and how it is over here on the left, you look at this with the noise removal, it kind of takes away those edges there and kind of blends it together a little bit better. It's just by luck. I ain't going to bump it down a little bit. I'm just going to go at 10%. I don't want it too drastic. Okay, you see how it made that stuff pop and Kind of blends everything together a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Ferret says, this quest is not for gluten-free players. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So adjust. You can mess with the color, recolor the stuff. Um, I think I want to do depth of field, sharpness, softness. I know there's a way to to make this look better. Uh, let's go with depth of field. Depth of field. That's pretty drastic. There we go. Just a slight blurry peripheral. Yeah. Just so it's not so banging up in the on the corners there. Very slight, subtle type thing. Okay. Now, out in the chat, what would what would be the backstory with this picture? I, I kind of gave my own uh, thoughts on it. What would you guys and gals uh, say, what would be the adventure hook of this picture? Attack of the cave, slime, and potato. <laughs> I agree, Shad. Name him Susan, because nobody would want to argue with him about his name anyway. <laughs> Let's 
uh, fair. It said, I would focus on the slime and make the depth of view inside the cave blurry so they don't know what's ahead. See, then I would have put the uh, actual text later so it wouldn't have blurred the text. So uh, that's yeah. Now that's where your organizational skills come in. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, George Jarvis said for the adventure hook, it says the, the cave of the slime for Titan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's just leave it at that. All right. So now it looks okay, but you know this sucker is huge. So I'm going to right click and do the image information. Holy cow. It's 1131, so 1131 by 874 pixels. Way too big for fantasy grounds. Whoa. <laughs> so, for a handout, that is. Yeah. I mean, it'll work, but it's still not quite there. So I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of a border around it. So add borders. Uh, and do something green. What do you know? You can't really see it, but it's there. It's on the edge here. It's kind of an olive dark green. And now I'm yeah. going to resize it. This time I'm going to be specific. So I'm going to resize one of the sides, the longest side, which is the horizontal. So I'm going to go to image, resize. And instead of percentage, I'm going to go by pixel this time. So it is this right now. So I'm going to go to eh, 1024. Oh, we got some cool responses here in the chat. Uh, Shad says, local farmer thinks blight has taken his yearly potato crop, but the folk tales know the <laughs> truth. When the moon is full and the sour cream has turned, he comes out, the mm -hmm. potato clops, to riv to avenge his, <laughs> his two recovery <re> brethren. <laughs> nice, Shad. Awesome, dude. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there's the potato poster. And you see it's got a little bit of a frame around it. It's got a little bit of flavor and color. And now, honestly, I don't like the way it looks up here. So I'm going to trim it down a little bit more. So I'll cut this. Because this is look like, looks like a green sock hanging from a chimney. <laughs> it's an <the> Irish Christmas. <laughs> Um, uh, Cat Wizard Gray says that the PCs were hired to investigate missing townsfolk and track the uh, stories and rumors to the cave. Nice. Very nice. getting there there we go now I'm gonna put a new border on it uh, cat wizard ask uh, can caves can cave slime corrode weapons and treasure maybe depends on what what, what you make it Yep, because you know when you were DM, you could you could give any creature, NPC, or whatever whatever powers and abilities that you want, you know. So yeah, uh, you could put a uh, pile of you know uh, weapons that, that have been corroded over time by the you know slime, or it could just be you know the uh, 
corroded weapons could just be time itself. You know, they just been here so long. This cave has been unexplored. You know, somebody maybe came down here before, seen the skulls and stuff, and like just put up signs outside the cave, like, hey, do not go in there. And people have stayed away for years. But now <clears throat> your band of intrepid adventurers decide to say, you know, screw that, go off the reservation, totally buck the system, and go check out the cave anyway. And uh, you come across the old corroded weapon either from the slime or just by time itself all right so i think that's pretty good um you get an idea of different things you can do with publisher um that's just and i'm this is corel actually so when i'm done i'll save it export it and i'd put it into my campaign folder in fantasy grounds and so that that's something that i could use as a handout or use it as a cover i guess Mm -hmm. so if anyone wants to write that adventure go for it <laughs> right i think uh george jarvis should take control of that one that seems like something to be down his alley <laughs> and so there's the uh the actual uh publisher file Now, there's something else I made with this publisher. Oh, nice. I'm going to try to read this without butchering it too bad. George says, then the wizard potato said the PCs, oh, the, the cape of baking powder and some, uh, <laughs> I don't know that word, weapon in the, the cave. <laughs> no one goes to the cave and then when the PCs go there, they get attacked by zombie potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's one I put together in... Uh publisher. I was using this for some kind of handout. So you can see amazing. I had a paladin mm -hmm. with his Pegasus friend. Castle background. Rocks up front. And without those rocks, it kind of looks stupid like without the... That's kind of a technique I use to kind of blend the photo together. Yeah, so you look it like makes it, it looks it makes like it looks a little bit more natural. Yeah, so it looks to me like they're floating on the water or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of disguise it, it kind of brings it more into the photo. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool, man. And all those are just assets I found online. And then I'll, I take it and I'll blend the photo together a little bit, kind of mesh it so it doesn't look mm -hmm. like it's three separate sources. Right. And I'll, I'll actually take and recolor the rocks before I import them here and make them blend into that background a little better. Yeah, yeah, so they're not so harsh and sticking mm -hmm. out like a sore thumb. Yep. Correct. So I'm also using this for maps. This is a pretty big map. I would not put this in the Fantasy Grounds. I'd have to break this up probably into four maps. Yeah. But if you look, it's got assets on there. There's a drow. Drider, I should say. Frog. A bloody body. A spider. I mean, you can kind of see where I'm going with it. Yeah. This is supposed to be a doorway and stairs. Compass. 
So anyways, that's just a, an idea of the things you can do with Publisher. I made something for Rob Toohey's Tomb of Annihilation game. I doubt he'll ever use it, but if he does, we'll see. Very cool. Now, Publisher, is it part of uh, Microsoft Suite, or do you have to buy it separately from them? Does it come included with certain programs or what? I think it's part of the uh, Microsoft Suite. I don't know if you can buy it separate or not, but it's not really that hard to use. Mm -hmm. It's fairly easy. I mean, it used to be really complicated to lay out stuff. Now it's way easier. Even Adobe has Premiere and things like that where you can make your own videos and they have layout and all kinds of stuff. Let's see. Here's another thing I made for my group. So I use this kind of like a poster for each one of our characters that I had on my adventuring group. So it's just kind of one of those things you can do all kinds of stuff with the art programs out there. I just want to encourage you guys to, to start making your own stuff. I mean, it's nice to buy all the modules and stuff, but once you get tired of those or you get to the point where you want to start doing your own, then train train up and learn as much as you can. Um, I have a long ways to go in the art department, but at least I have a start on something that's halfway decent. So just a, a quick uh, overview. So I kind of went through a bunch of custom things. Um, this is more for like creative um processes that you would use for making things with fantasy grounds uh, we've gone for about what an hour and a half or two and a half hours so yeah, i think we want to like call that. this a wrap so are there any questions before i go uh i do not see any so i guess we're good sir all right guys thanks for stopping by and hopefully that gives you some inspiration and hope when you make your own items I'm going to do another video, and I think on that one I'm going to work on some maps or something like that. So if you guys need more help, just come into the college, and I'll, I'll help with help you guys one-on-one. -on -one. Because that's why I'm here, and that's why the rest of us are here as volunteers. We're not getting paid. We are not part of SmiteWorks or Fantasy Grounds, but we do support them. And I recommend that you go out and get yourself a subscription if you don't already have one. Um, you don't have to. You can stay as a demo uh, client, as a player. But if you want to start making stuff, I mean, there's there's some options out there where you can get the subscription for like three or four bucks as a standard subscription per month. Or you can get the, the ultimate license, which roughly is about ten bucks a month, depending on where you live and whatnot. And that's a good way to get started. And then you just slowly invest in some of the books. Like, you know, you can get the player's handbook or the Dungeon Master's Guide, and maybe even the uh, Player's Handbook with the DM's Guide and along with the Monster Manual and Volo's Guide and all those other things. So you don't necessarily have to buy all the settings. You can make your own setting. And so what I'm really trying to encourage is that you guys make your own stuff. This is a lot of fun. Uh, I appreciate uh, all of you stopping by and checking out me babbling and playing around on my computer. And... <laughs> Also, uh, to Fat Ninja for curating and helping me out here in the stream. I hope that you guys learned a little bit. And one of the things you did probably learn is I'm not very organized. So that, <laughs> that was definitely a mess as far as organization goes. 
But, you know, the way I was going to do it is, is lay everything out and do it one by one. And I thought, you know, that's not natural for me. So what was natural for me was to experiment and play around and have fun. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully yep. you guys got a little insight as to how to do some of the stuff on your own. And if you guys um, want to publish to the DMs Guild, make sure that you follow all the rules. Don't use other people's artwork. Just make sure that you're in compliance with whatever the uh, current uh, lobby is for the uh, copyright. And artwork is a really tough thing. So make sure that you only use um, common and you have cleared licenses or that you pay for it yourself. Yep. But imagination is actually free. So if you have the, the brain and the mind for it, you can do it. Yep. All right. And, uh, cat, cat Wizard Gray says thank you for the class. No problem. We're going to do more. So if you guys want to start back or you want to contact me individually, I can sit with you. And I really appreciate everyone being uh, participating in the college and in the community as a whole. Um, I think this is a great community. I don't think I'd trade it in for any other. So with that in mind, I want to preach solidarity help, um, teaching other people, um, making life good again for yourself, for your family and your friends. And I'm hoping that this uh, Fantasy Grounds is giving you what you need. So uh, with that, I'm going to let you go. So I'll talk to you next time. See ya. Later, folks.